Hello and welcome to a new video about the physical principles of electricity. I have a shirt on. Look at that. Uh, this is typical here. Current. Voltage. Uh, driving the current through a conductive material. And the resistance. The resistance is blocking. Uh, electricity explained. This is what we learned so far. <laughs> and now we'll take a little bit closer look to this yellow guy. Uh, this angry looking yellow guy, the resistance. Uh, well, let's assume we have a piece of, of conductive material. Here it is. Then we have a certain resistance. We said, okay, we can measure this and so on. We have a certain resistance at a current at this length of this, uh, and and we are fine. Yeah? From what from what is this resistance depending? Let's have a look. Yeah, we said, okay, how depending on how many electrons are moving, yeah, how far the electrons are moving, uh, they need. They need more or less speed, depending on the area. So it must somehow depend on the area, but also on the length. Yeah? Because if they, have a, if they have to travel further, yeah, they have simply more, more atoms to pass and there is more friction. So actually there is a difference between this piece of conductive material and this piece of conductive material. Even if they are from the same material, of course, it's also material dependent because we said, okay, there are materials which have uh, only loose bindings between electrons and 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 atoms, and there there the electrons can move easily. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's based on the material, but it's also based on the size and length and area of this stuff. Yeah. In usual materials, we have around 10 raised to the power of 23 atoms per square centimeter. Okay. That many atoms are inside per square, like per square centimeter. And yeah, those are available in conductive material for conductance, uh, for, for the current. If you think that one atom can spare one electron, for instance. Yeah? So how is we have here the length L? How is the resistance calculated of a certain material? Have a look at that. Okay, the length L, we have here the area A. Okay. And the resistance R. Is calculated. We said the longer it is, the worse it is. Yeah? And we said the bigger the area is, the better it is. Yeah? And then we have a material constant, and this material constant is called rho. Yeah? And this rho is called electrical. Resistivity, electrical resistivity unit is a ohm meter per meter, ohm square meter per meter. Yeah? Then we, we lift usual is ohm square millimeter per meter. Yeah? So usually the the area is given in square millimeter and the length is given in meter, so it's convenient to use this. Yeah? Then we can put this in in square millimeters and the length in meters, and we are fine. 
uh, we get out the resistance in in oh, uh, the for instance uh, copper we have zero dot zero one seven eight ohm square millimeter by meter silver one very good conductor yeah. gold gold see ooh copper is much better than gold so even if we would could afford it a gold wire is not desirable all right so that's the resistance the resistance depending on the material so material constant this uh electric uh, resistivity and the length and the area sometimes it's better to use uh not the resistance but how good so not telling how bad it is working telling how good it is working yeah this thing is called con conductance yeah? so this is this is the resistance resistance and then we also have g called g And this equals one divided by R. So, and this equals then A. It's also a material constant, a constant gamma L. So exactly, exactly the other way around. Yeah. This thing is called uh, electrical. This is the conductance. Unit one by ohm, and this is one S Siemens. And this gamma is the electrical conductivity. This is one divided by this rule. Sometimes it's better to use to use the conductance than the resistance. When we're talking about parallel combinations of resistance, then this is better. We will see. You, it's not that usual to use this, but sometimes it's helpful. Good. But this is not the only thing which have influence on the resistance. Yeah? There are also other things. So let's come back to this, this sheet. We said, okay, that the electrons are passing through a network, a grid of, of atoms. Yeah? But those atoms, they are not stable. They are not located stable on their place because we have heat. Yeah? And the more heat we have in, the more they are chittering. Yeah? If we have too much heat in, they are even chittering at that much that they get loose. Yeah? And then this solid, former solid, is melting. Because then also the, the atom cores, the nucleus, are able to change places. And then we have a liquid. Yeah? Then it's melting. Once this is not the case, they are just chittering around the positions. And now let's imagine a soccer game. You want to score a goal. You want to get beyond this goalkeeper. And if the goalie is standing there, it is easy to pass him. If he is moving, constantly moving, it's not that easy to pass him. And if he is moving so fast that he is literally everywhere, then you cannot pass him. Because he is also everywhere at the same time because it's moving too fast. Simply. And exactly this thing is also happening with our electrons. If this 
material is cold and the positions of the electrons are relatively stable, we can go through easily. If, the pos if this is not cold, if it's hot, and the positions are jittery, it's, you know, there is more chaos, more friction. This means the resistance is also depending on the temperature. So actually, if we take a look, here's the temperature theta, here's the resistance R, then what we calculated here is usually given by 20 degrees Celsius. We have a certain amount of resistance. This is what we calculated here. This is this R20. All right? And then the hotter it gets, the more resistance we have. And this is usually not linear. This is somehow like that. However, for electrical reasons, not talking about measurement now, measurement is different, but for electrical reasons, we can say, okay, we take this, make a linear approximation, and we say our resistance at the temperature theta is the resistance at temperature 20 degree okay. multiplied 1 plus and now we have a thermal coefficient alpha multiplied by the by the difference so if we have here a temperature theta then this is the difference And here we're ending up at the resistance R from theta. This is how this looks like. This alpha is called temperature coefficient. It's given in per degree Celsius or by Kelvin. Yeah, and usually the materials also have 0 0.004 per Kelvin. This is a usual, it's also a material constant. Yeah, if you don't have nothing better, use this. Yeah, copper, for instance, is pretty close to this. Yeah? Other materials which are different. This is not true in every case. Yeah, like, like I said. This is only for electrical reasons, also this linear approximation. Only for, if, if you're talking about measurement, there's no linear approximation. Nickel is, is, uh, power of six approximation. Yeah. And even platinum, which is very linear in reality, yeah, is, uh, with a squared, with a squared approximation for measurement reasons. For us, in electricity, it's enough to have this linear approximation. Because it does not really matter if it has 102 or 104 degrees Celsius. You know, once this gets important, it must be more important. You know, we must closer approximate the real curve. Semiconductor materials, we said here, semiconductor materials are more the common case and they also behave totally different here. Totally different. They are not, they are not even, they, you, they are not closely linear, usually, yeah. And there are even materials, uh, not only semiconductor materials, but there are even materials out there which do have a negative temperature, uh, negative temperature coefficient. NTCs, those are called, yeah. They are the hotter they're getting, the better the conductance is. Yeah? These are also effects which, yeah, they are, they are not too easy to explain. Yeah? So for us, this should be sufficient. Talking about not too easy to explain. Uh, you probably heard also of superconductivity. So that when we reach a certain temperature, low temperature and below, yeah, 
then suddenly there is no electrical resistance anymore. And now you could come to the idea, oh, this is already dead, yeah, because you see, yeah, it's getting down, and then at some point it's down at zero, and then, then that's superconductivity. No, that's, that's not, that's not, that's, like I said, it's not linear. You cannot, you cannot do that. Yeah? Superconductivity is, <laughs> we think, yeah? we can, how it's working, it's still not totally clear, but Currently, the suspicion is that we have here we have here uh, the, the the nucleus, uh, and now we have an electron, which is here, and now the electron is passing, coming to here, and the electron has a little force, of course, to the nucleus. So the nucleus, even if it cannot move, but it might getting close a little bit to here. All right? Because there is force. Yeah? Electron attracting. So the cores are moving a little bit closer to the electron. Okay. Once the electron has passed, so we are here now. Here we have no effect. Once the electron has passed, this force is gone. So the electron, which is here, will go here. The force is gone, yeah, and those will move. But because they have mass, they will not go to their rest position where they were before, but further. Notice the wood like a pendulum which is swinging. Okay? Okay, we can think about that. And if in that case, when those, uh, those, those cores, are separated further than usual, yeah? then they would be, if this was not disturbed by one electron, then the next electron can pass more easy. And if now the electrons comes with the right rate, and the previous electron is at the right rate and the right speed, and the previous electron is influencing those nucleus from the atoms in a way that they are swinging and there is a constant swing and every time they are apart, the next electron is passing easy yeah? because it's like opening a door. It's like in Star Trek, the sliding doors. This woof, and then pass and then woof, woof, woof. And if this is all happening like on the BFS in Munich with music and woof, woof, and we're marching, then suddenly the resistance is dropping to zero. This is at least how we think this is working. Mankind will find out eventually the Beatles. For us, this is enough. Resistance. So next time we're talking about different conductivity method. Yeah, next time we're talking about fluids. So not no longer uh, solids. We're talking about fluids because there it's different. There all the cores of the of the uh, atoms can move because they have no fixed place because they are it's a liquid. Next time. Conductivity of liquids. This time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.